Coming up on today's show, we'll be talking about the potential secret war plans for Avengers 5. We'll be talking about the week's big releases, including Firestarter. And we'll be sitting down with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness star Benedict Wong. <laughs> Welcome to What's On at Cine World Cinemas. I am Luke Cohen. And I am nothing, nowhere, rarely, if ever, Dan Layton. Dan, um, we want to talk this week about uh, Avengers 5. Yes. Because Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Avengers is... 5. Oh, Thank you, you want to do one of those? Yeah. I just, I just I always like, you always have to see if there's an opportunity. And there is. Yes. To so replace the S in Avengers That's right. with the number five. The number five. But they don't really name them after numbers. They no. haven't done since Iron Man 2. But I can, and you can, and so we shall. Yes. So Avenger from, 5. So Avenger <laughs> <for> Aven- <laughs> 5. Um, we, we've had Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness yes. out now. We're still in no spoiler territory here on this show. Yeah, although I did find someone in the office hasn't seen Spider-Man yet. And I think there is a statute of limitations on spoilers. Well, I think that, and I, you know, we were going to talk about one of the spoilers be- from uh, Doctor Strange yes. because Marvel are now releasing it. If they're talking it about it. If they're talking about it and such, absolutely. It's not major. No, but however, but like... It could be. One of our editors was editing one uh, a podcast that we do and one of our hosts dropped a big spoiler <sighs> in there and he was mad upset about it. I can and imagine. And he was very, very upset about it last night and he was just like, if someone could have a word. <laughs> with them, that'd be great. And was I, it I, you? <laughs> and, and I felt genuinely awful about it when I went to bed. Yeah. I, I hadn't said it, and I wasn't like managing that the show. Guilt. Anything, but the guilt of some like founding. So I don't want to be that guy. No, no one does. So we're still in no spoiler territory okay. here. However, the writer of the movie, Michael Waldron, has been talking a lot, a lot, it would seem. He's been doing a lot of interviews about what certain moments from the movie mean. Yeah. And certain... They have chosen chaos a little bit, haven't they? A little bit, yeah. yeah. I think they're all now just like, if you haven't seen it on opening day, it's your own fault. Well, you see what Kevin Feige said? He said something about, he's not really fussed about leaks and things like that because it can almost make the cinema going experience even better. You've got to go and see that There was something moment. about the moment in Spider-Man mm-hmm. with where the cinema erupted because they were given what they wanted. Mm. It's like the opposite of um, Vince McMahon and WWE. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I know what you want. You're not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. Though. Or the end of oh, that's I'm about to spoil something else entirely. <laughs> a whole show. I mean, that finished like five, six years ago. But even so, I'm reining myself. I'm learning. Yeah, people. you secure. were saying. Yeah. So he's been doing a lot of interviews about sort of certain moments within the movie. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting because it's something that is mentioned in the movie, but it's not like a massive. I suppose it is sort of the idea of incursions. Yes. Well, incursions is a, is a thing. If you've seen What If or even Loki, there's been mentions of what that means and yeah. what it might be. And it's quite a smart little device. Yes. So, I mean, you have seen the film three times now. Why don't you tell us what an incursion is? So an incursion is what happens when two realities collide. And the thing that makes it really smart as a storytelling device for the people who... I'm, I'm putting my screenwriting degree to use. The thing that makes it good as a storytelling device is that it provides a limitation. Because if you just say multiversal travel and people can be in loads of different multiverses, we as an audience have fewer reasons to be able to be concerned because oh we'll just replace that person with someone else and Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't doesn't really matter if they were to like be in peril the peril is is reduced if you know that you've got a backup yes whereas an incursion says you have a window where these two realities can collide and any longer than that and the entire universe both of them might collapse and i think the 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 um what they're setting up is that I think there's like an eight hour window or something like that. Or that might have been in a comic, but there's a, there's a basically you've got a window. Yeah. And if not, both, one or both of these realities will just implode entirely. And we do see that in the trailer, uh, what an incursion looks like. One of the things I thought was really interesting about uh, the interviews that Michael Waldron has done mm. is he compares the sort of setting up of incursions in Doctor Strange, as you mentioned, Loki and, and What If and stuff. What If, I'd, ne- I'd never thought that that would become like this massive, yeah. you need to have actually seen this. Because What If comics were just like, these are fun little comic books. Yeah. What if Karen Page hadn't been killed and you just mm. find sort of what happened? But like these are, now it's become like this, you should really watch this, particularly in this multiversal Good world. little like in. sort of Wikipedia, you know, when you're on a Wikipedia chain. It's one of those. Yeah. And but what's interesting here is that he kind of compares this to setting up space in Thor. 
Mm. So like in in yeah. Iron Man and Iron Man Two and um, uh, Incredible Hulk and things like that, it was just like these are set on Earth, mm -hmm. and then Thor is just like and space, space is exists. Here. And then when it gets to the Avengers, it's like, and now aliens exist. Yeah. And then it's like, and that was then used to kind of set up Thanos mm -hmm. to be like, and now Thanos is going to be our next big bad for the next 10 years or whatever yeah. it is. And he kind of compares it to his. This is the interview he did where he said, I'm going to grab my laptop here. Well, I guess I think it's akin to the way that as soon as the MCU introduced the notion of space, going to space, they teased Thanos almost immediately. There was Thor, then the Avengers with the first movie where they had a threat from the stars. And here comes Thanos. Obviously, there was a big build from there. So I think that maybe I always thought of the multiverse of kind of like, okay, this is space. You know, once upon a time, the MCU left Earth and went to the stars, and now we're going into the multiverse. So yeah, we'll see what happens with these incursions. They're bad news. Mm. And that has led people to believe that this is going to lead to the next big events of the MCU, whether mm -hmm. it is Avengers 5 or whether... You know, Excuse me? Sorry, uh, Avengers... Avenger, Avenger 5. It? Avenger 5, do apologize. Uh, it's, that's, it's not as good as Scraform. It's not snappy, but it's not, you know. Your 5 cream. It, it doesn't, I think 5 is an awkward it number. Is, to it really is. As well, there was a rumor back in November that Marvel were going to set up Secret Wars. Mm. And that's going to be the next big event movie, whether that is, because they haven't announced a new Avengers movie. And Secret movie. Wars has two fives in it. So oh. that's really what they should be. Uh, marketing team, give me a bell. Right. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting having gone back and watched a bunch of the um, early Marvel movies. I just got so excited about uh, Multiverse of Madness, and I wanted to, you know, and I, I had I had uh, some time off, so I thought I would binge a bunch. And I watched Cap, the first Cap. I watched Thor. I watched Iron Man three, and all the things, and the first Avengers because it was the ten year anniversary. And it's fascinating in that for them to talk about. We, we're doing what we're doing because of him and they point at Thor and it's like we just realised there was a whole world. So one thing that Marvel have done since the beginning really well is set up things and, you know, provide a logical explanation for it. Because it is a massive jump to go from the first Iron Man and your villain is your CEO. Yeah. And you're both on the ground. It's very grounded mm -hmm. to, oh, we've got aliens now. We're fighting aliens. That's a lot. So it's very clever to do it on a little grade. And, and then when you think, of, if, you, if you were to have shown me the first Iron Man and say... In a little while, there are going to be multiple realities, loads of different universes, and the big issue is going to be whether two realities collide and it causes an incursion and can either survive. I would have been like, that's very busy. Yeah. So it's very smart to plonk these little things here and there and provide you with a solid, again, storytelling foundation to be able to go there. And I really like the idea of them using this to set up Secret War. Tell me what those are. So Secret War was a, it was actually the original events comic of Marvel, sort of like back in the mid 80s. Pre like, right? War. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this was oh. like sort of 84 through to 85. The idea behind um, Secret War was that Mezco, the toy company, wanted to release toys about Marvel characters. Nice. And uh, Marvel was just like, well, why would all of these comic book characters be in the same place all at once? Well, we'll create a comic book event where they all come into the one place. We love one. a smart tie in. And it was called Secret War. So they released a toy line, but Secret War. Better, better, better. Written by a guy named Jim Shooter. Uh, he did an interview when well, he was at a Comic Con, like a bit back in November, mm -hmm. where he had been contacted by Marvel about a novelization of Secret War, and you know, sort of like offering him a contract whether he wants to write it, this and the other. And in that conversation, he said to them, "Does this mean you're doing a movie version of Secret War?" And they replied, "I can't tell you that." <laughs> and he replied, "You just did." <laughs> yeah, I love that when they do this. It's not too dissimilar to Tom Dolan getting in trouble because yeah. there's moments where there was an interview with um, oh my gosh what's his name the writer Michael Walden yes uh, where he says um, they, they ask him a question about something that happens in the movie and he says are we going to see more of this and he literally replies with that is way above my pay grade I'm not telling you anything <laughs> that is like they've become the classic line yeah. now for people to say it's like that's above my pay grade I can't tell you that can't tell you that which is basically a uh, uh, uh -huh. keep talking so yeah so this and it was basically a way for as a character called the Beyonder who brought in all these Marvel uh villains and heroes together, created teams, and then made them do fights. Mm -hmm. So what if we had the idea of our big events movie is going to be the Beyonder brings in two universes together, only one can survive. Yeah. And that's how we're going to have our next big event movie. Yeah. And they've got so much to play with now. They've got so many different properties. Exactly, yeah. And with. as we've seen through Doctor Strange, you can just have a lot of fun with that because yeah. you can just... Because it is different multiverses and stuff, just 
make up stuff and just be like, and that's a fun little bit of fan service there. And as much as the, the sophomore album is difficult, even though, you know, this at this point would be the it would be the fifth album, the the um there's something freeing about having landed the end game plane so well, you know, having having really nailed it, that then gives you and provided this nice tight little bundle, this little present, that gives you freedom to sort of try things exactly and and you know go okay well you know some people might have got off the plane for everyone else we're going down this little route yeah i've actually been a little bit i mean we'll move on from this in, in, in just a moment but I, I have been a little bit annoyed with people who have said like i'm just not into a phase four as much as i was uh end game like, well of course you're not into it as much as end game that was tw 12 years yeah, of storytelling to go to that point you know like well it's only been happening for six months and i'm not as much into this one as i was i describe previous. it this way a lot it's like setting out your chess pieces right and putting everything in place that you can then go okay right and here's my move here are my strategies here's how i'm going to get to checkmate um the the early phases the early films and the early phases this for phase four it's basically phase one phase one again. we're right back to the beginning so it's them setting out the stall saying here's where we find these characters here's where the universe is let's go yeah um plot things here plot things here plot yeah. things here they'll and pay off in eight years time that can be really not done very well that's what the second fantastic beast movie was for me just a lot of putting things on the on the table and it didn't really have a lot of story there wasn't a lot going on the money exactly so this is each chess piece that's being laid out at least within it has a really interesting story it's got a really interesting play on what the multiverse means what it can be what this this notion of identity i think it'll cause massive identity crises for an awful lot of the audience it has to me already so um yeah i don't have patience for that either i think it's you know see what happens they're all fun have a good time <laughs> chill out a couple of big releases to talk about this week one of them i'm very very excited about mm -hmm. and that is firestarter stephen king remake of the uh movie from the 80s or it might be the early 90s actually but yes you're right based on the stephen king story yeah now Great cast, mm -hmm. uh, Zac Efron. Yep. Zac Efron, by the way, and this I nearly had this as the lead for this, wants to do a reboot of High School Musical. High School Musical, the musical, the series, the sequel film. Yeah, the reboot. The reboot. Yeah. I, I would love to <laughs> see. I would love... <laughs> I would have adored to see it. We need to talk about Firestar, but I would adore to see a yeah. high school musical film where the original cast are now the teachers. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, well, write it. Oh, well, I will do. Go, right now. <laughs> we were talking about sort of movies that we made when we were at university. Yeah. I did have a script that's called High School Maniacal, and it was a horror uh, a horror parody of High School Musical. I never made it. Really? Anyway, so Firestarter. So it's a great cast. Yeah. Zac Efron, one of my favorite actors in the world, Kurtwood Smith, like yeah. the greatest villain of all time in um, uh, Clarence Boddicker in Robocop. And of course, the dad in that 70s show. And of course, that dad in that 70s show. Uh, but for me, the big appeal here, and the reason I'm so desperate to go and see this is music by John Carpenter. Yeah, they I mean, go. also, and Cody Carpenter, and he's also amazing, but music by John Carpenter. Yeah. And like, they released, you know, the track a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it was like, <gasps> there's a new track from John Carpenter. Quickly, 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 quickly. So I love, 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 love John Carpenter music. And it just fits so beautifully with a movie like this. I mean, Stephen King, th those stories are, are, are not your average horror. You know, it's like, there's a reason he's like the Don of that kind of thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued. I'm not really good with them. Um, Things that make my brain go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll see how, how long I survive. <laughs> uh, we've also got Father Stew out this week and a very small release only in 25 cinemas this Friday. There's a wider release for it the following week. Everything, everywhere, all at once, which you I have now seen. I have seen it. I went to the unlimited screening we had on uh, Tuesday. I couldn't Tuesday. go. It, it was a it was a packed cinema. I went in Leicester Square, uh, and everyone was having a very good time with this film. It was one the hype has been so strong at this point because we obviously didn't have it for a while. There was no date announced for the UK, and sometimes when that happens, it means we're not going to get a cinema release at all. So if you have the opportunity to get out and go and see this film in the cinemas, you should because it's a really exciting and different approach to the multiverse concept. It's not a superhero movie. It's not it's not attached to any other IP. It's just someone had an idea for a high concept script. They wrote it and put it out there. Oh there are some incredible performances Got in this to film. See this there movie. are some really exciting and interesting different visual effects in this film. I'll be so annoyed if I don't get to go. Jamie see Lee this Curtis picture. was an MVP. Oh. If you can get a chance to see, I mean, I know it's a limited release this week, and then it's a wider release the week after. 
Try and plan ahead. Try and yeah. make sure that you find some time to go and see this movie. If not else, you'll be part of the conversation. Exactly. So, I mean, that's a, that's a recommendation mm -hmm. from you. Editor Terry was telling me earlier that yeah. it's, it's her favourite movie yeah. of the year. Um, Tempest, who we do podcast with, has said it might be one of his favourite movies he's ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's getting that level of oh. hype. And I always want to be a little bit wary with that level yes, of absolutely. hype. Because you can build it up to be something too big. And then, you know, it's like, it's got a bar like, that it can't live to. It's totally fine. And yeah. even if it's great, it's like, has it met the bar of the best film I've ever seen? So I enjoyed it very much. For me, it didn't do for me what The Northman did. Mm -hmm. So that's tempering your expectations a little bit. However, it's great. It's really good. It'll be definitely be in that top 10 contenders for the end of the year. You can also still book tickets for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, available in 4DX, 3D, ScreenX, IMAX, Super Screen, and VIP. And mm. recently, you had the chance to chat with one of its stars. A little sit down with, uh, with Benedict Wong, the Sorcerer Supreme himself. And here, here it is. Have a look. It comes at a good time for you to become the Sorcerer Supreme because it's a very sort of crucial moment in uh, the, in, with the multiverse blowing wide open as an actor and as a comic book fan is that a fun sort of narrative to play with oh i mean it's amazing for me i mean yeah, I, yeah I, I, as you said you know i've collected uh, these comics um you know when i was 14 you know growing up all the spider-man comics and then to meet stan lee and then I'll obviously <laughs> kind of find myself as an actor and to play the character of wong and you know it, I, I feel like with one division and, and no way home it's like this kind of crack of parallel realities all these new characters are all seeping through and mm -hmm. everything is always a bit, bit of a constant surprise for me you know as i each time i get the call from the mcu I kind of sort of pinch myself all the time you know but i mean like we're kind of it's quite a, uh you know the, the 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 main crux of the family like you know you know, always have charles wood and his kind of amazing um uh, set designs i think are always brilliant and uh so i'm always kind of uh, taken aback by those. We've also got Downton Abbey, The Lost City, and Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. So, what's your pick of the week? Because I think there's there's three options here. Don't I? Yeah, I didn't mean this to is interrupt a you. One. We have got three jobs. Because obviously, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness still is still going. There's everything everywhere all at once, though that is in its smaller release, so maybe that should be saved for next week. But mm. there's also Firestarter, which I'm really excited about. I think my pick for this week is probably Firestarter, because again, it's something different and exciting yeah. that, you know, I haven't, I wouldn't n normally go and, and see, so I'm trying to get myself out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I wouldn't go and see because I'm a scaredy cat. Yeah. Um, and he gets into my head, does Stephen King. Even his writing, he, he wrote a book about the process of writing, and yeah. that haunted me till the day I die. Um, no, I think probably Firestarter for me. Yeah. I. I think I'm also going to say Firestarter mm -hmm. with a little asterisk that's also everything everywhere all at once because you should see the movie as soon as you possibly can. Week, yeah. yeah. And this week's James Bond movie is You Only Live Twice from 1967. 1960s, you only live twice. Mm hmm. It's one of my actual, I really like you in it twice. It's yeah. really, really good. Tickets are on sale for that wider release of Everything Everywhere All at Once and Jurassic World available in 4DX, 3D, ScreenX, IMAX, Super Screen, and VIP. Are you excited for Jurassic World Dominion? Yeah. So I one of the first films back when we got the cinemas back open that I went to see was Jurassic Park in 4DX. <gasps> yeah. Oh. Because I was looking for a good time. And sure enough, I was presented with a very good time. A lot of thrashing, a lot mm. of spraying, a yep. lot of all the rest. So, like the, uh, the thingy, the, um, oh man, what are they called? The, the, the thingy one. Yeah. Spraying in your face. Yeah, there was an element of that. There was the, there was the, the feet tickles for all the plants and things cool. like that. It's a fun time. And so I probably, there's a, I probably will go and see this movie in 4DX. This is one where I'm like, I want the full dinosaur thrashy experience. I think I want to see Pratt in IMAX. Actually, oh, no, yeah. I want to see Goldblum in IMAX. Yeah, oh, that's true. That moment when they see, you see them all again for the first time on a giant screen, all mm -hmm. shining, yeah. And speaking of IMAX, oh, we still have got, coming up, in fact, next week, <laughs> the regional premiere of Top Gun Maverick mm. in IMAX. It's available in Ashford, Belfast, Birmingham, Edinburgh, Plymouth, Sheffield, and York and all of the proceeds of the screening will be donated to the film and TV charity, which offers support to those working behind the scenes in film, TV, and cinema. The uh, first reviews are coming in for Top Gun Maverick and they are very positive. People are very, my mum is very excited about Top Gun Maverick. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know this. We, I was talking to my mum on the phone last night and talking about what was coming. She's just seen Downton. She's telling me how excited she is for Top Gun Maverick. And then she dropped like plot 
details that she was specific. I was like, how have I been your son for 32 years? I'm only just learning that you love Top Gun. Yeah. And how have I never seen it? What is this? So there you go. My mum will be there. Aviators on. Oh, leather yeah. jacket. Ready to go. <laughs> Ready to watch it in IMAX. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, mum, take them off. She's like, a bit dark in there. <laughs> that was your fault. Tickets are available for its general release as well. Available in 4DX, ScreenX, IMAX, Super Screen, and V. IP. We've also got NT Live's performance of Straight Line Crazy on May 26th and Prima, I'm going to say Facey on July 21st, but you, uh, your eyes lit up when you saw it there. Yeah, so that, this is Jodie Comer. This is a play that is currently on in, the, in London's glittering West End and it is getting reviews like I've never seen. People, I mean, Jodie Comer, we're a big fan of, everyone mm-hmm. loves Jodie Comer. She, so my friend went to see it and, and gave me a full DM breakdown afterwards. Apparently she dances through various accents like it's nobody's business. And that, sustaining an accent is one of the hardest things. I'm from Warrington, can you tell? <laughs> I've lived in London for eight years, you couldn't, you wouldn't know. I'm Northern, but um, she dances through Scouse and, and RP and Birmingham and all the rest, like nobody's business. And apparently the performance is so um, consummate, it's so complete. Um, so I'm very excited. I didn't know that was having a, a cinema release. So that's going to be great. The only other actor I think that could do that as well is Keanu Reeves, because that's what he did in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Not, you know, I don't think he did it on purpose. The one with Gary Oldman. Yeah, but yeah. He, just, like, he just dances from accent to accent. <laughs> <in them. laughs> it's supposed to be British the whole time. But it's just like, nope, I don't, where, where's the, he off to this time? <laughs> where's, he, where's he going? If you want to check out any of the movies that we have discussed on today's show, you can click the links in the video description down below to get your tickets today. And if you like these two idiots talking to each other with some more waffle, we have got the audio podcast version of this available on all podcast platforms and we'll see you in seven days time. well i won't see you because you're off next week's show a very important and special i've got to go and do a thing with uh 40x about 40x and tiktok so stay tuned for that yeah, but i'll be here on youtube where the cool people are <laughs> i've been luke owen and i've been dan late and that's what's up